What's going on, buddy? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Cohort Progression Podcast, brought to you by MSOTD Rocks, where Rockman will thrive. Hey, guys, it's August still, and we are bringing you so, so, so many great bands this month. But before we talk about this next one, I want to thank our sponsor, Phoenix Fitness. Yeah. I'm back at live shows. I am going nuts in that mosh pit, and I want to make sure that I have enough energy, stamina, and strength to be in those mosh pits consistently because it seems like every other day I'm going to a live show, and I cannot stop loving it. But I want to make sure my fitness is up to par so I can keep doing that where Phoenix Fitness comes in. I'm in the gym. I'm trying to make sure I'm my strongest, fittest, have the best cardio I can possibly have, and I need to make sure that I recover right. That's where Phoenix Fitness comes in with different pre-workouts to get you amped up, different BCW recoveries, different proteins, different multivitamins, whatever it might be in order for you to help achieve your fitness goals. And when it comes to concerts, make sure you don't tap out halfway through. Our listeners and viewers on YouTube get 15, count it, 1, 5% off of your entire order at phoenixfitness.com when you use the code MSOTD at checkout. Link is in the description below for you to check that out. So please go enjoy that. And now on to our featured presentation. I thought I was actually friends with this person on Facebook before actually having a chance to interview him. And I can check out their brand new song called Phantom Pain, which is out now for you guys to check out. If you guys like metalcore and you want to have a deep, deep, deep conversation in terms of potential past traumas coming back in you, how to prevent that from happening, and really understand that through song, along with different tropes about the music industry, different bands that, you know, we have changed their sound, and why, if you don't like it, just find something new, don't bash on the band. We take a look at a lot of this stuff that really deals with more mentality around this song called Phantom Pain. The band is called Saving Vice. Tyler, one of their lead vocals, is here with us today, so... Please welcome him, and enough with me. Are you guys ready? Let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, you guys know I love to show as much music as possible to you, especially bands that are really upcoming in the scene today, anywhere within rock and metal and their subgenres, and I got a great one for you today. Oddly enough, I found out while I got in contact with this band that I'm actually friends on Facebook with the man I am talking with right now. I completely like didn't know about it until I got, saw the band. I'm like, wait a minute, I know this name. And I looked up, I'm like, holy shit, how am I friends with this guy on Facebook? But enough with that. Here we are today with him. So please welcome Tyler from the band Saving Vice. So Tyler, welcome to Core Progression Podcast. What's up, dude? How you doing? I am doing all right today. How is everything going in your neck of the woods? Really busy, but like in a good way, you know, busy in a way we haven't been in a year, you know, but in a way we're not used to because of the past year, I guess. Well, well, yeah, I mean, because you guys, of course, as musicians, once the pandemic hit, everything went like full on stop. Really, the only thing you could do at that point was potentially write music and do everything over the internet. There were no performances like live performances. Of course, there were streaming performances, but everything had to be done online, whether it's writing music, creating music, connecting with the fans via social media via twitch whatever it might have been so now with everything opening back up everything like back on concerts back on me jumping back into mosh pits getting my face completely punched a couple of times which makes me feel alive again so yeah it's definitely good to have like a different kind of busy like that kind of busy where you're back to doing what you want to do with music you're back you know potentially getting back on the road getting together with the guys writing as much music possible performing and really doing everything as a band that you had pretty much done pre-pandemic yeah i mean it's like uh i I don't know i feel like if we uh we talked about just what it was like to come back from that i feel like we would talk all night about that subject alone but um it's yeah it's pretty much just like even just being together, all five of us, we did so much stuff remotely from, we even were using software to where I would have my guitarist, like basically hijacking my computer from his house while I was tracking vocals. So he could produce me because we couldn't be together because of COVID. And like, we were out of state where we don't all live in the same state. So uh, the big thing with all that was pretty much just like getting used to seeing each other again and working together in person. And then, Obviously, rehearsing together for the first time was really like weird and rough because we haven't practiced in a live setting, you know, in like 17 months. So, but it's it's been like really fun in like the best way. It's chaotic, but it's like the good kind of chaos where you feel like you're productive all the time. 
or it's also the kind of chaos where we recognize exactly what we had gone through with the pandemic and when it comes to anything with music we realize what we lost because of it we realize that we lost on that connection like from your perspective connection when it comes to playing with your band together rehearsing together and actually being in the same room making music together and for us as fans on the other end we missed out on the whole entire seeing you guys play live and be a part of that live experience i mean how back in or like july when i got to jump in my first mosh pit in over a year it was somewhere I'm like, I'm just thinking, holy crap, this is going to be awesome. Lily, jump in. I get smacked in the face in the first three seconds. I've never That's been happy to get smacked in the face in my entire <laughs> life. I'm just like, this is incredible. I don't, it, it sounds like it's, you know, horrible, but no, 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 no. It felt great just because there was a sense of return to some sort of happiness in a way because live music is back. We're connecting with it once again. And the community of people that are in rock and metal are able to connect once again like that instead of just talking online. We're able to be all together and experience the positivity the live show brings once again. Yeah, I mean, that that's actually like, I mean, I guess I can say this because this will be out after Phantom Pain comes out. But, uh, you know, that's what Phantom Pain was kind of about. I mean, all of our all of our music has like an overarching theme where it's something general that can relate to like a lot of people. but within that there's always the specific lyrics or like things that are buried in it that are specific to me or chase when we're writing something but phantom pain for me was really about the absence of music as an outlet when music was the biggest outlet for all of your like mental health issues so like not being able to like use that and play shows and be in that environment it's almost like it gave way to all of the stuff that had been staving off for all of that time and Phantom Pain was kind of about feeling that like old stuff come back and make you feel that way again because you didn't have music or you didn't have that thing that was like kind of distracting you from it or helping you deal with it. So it's funny you say that because it's just like, you know, pretty much like where the song lyrically started. Interesting, because always whenever I go deep dive into a song because I did that with Phantom Pain as well. I do start with the me, and I've brought this up multiple times in the podcast, so long-time listeners know exactly where I'm going with this, where when it comes to really look at the meaning of a song, the core emotion is going to be what connects the fans. Because when you get boil down to this topic of the song and the specifics of it, what you went through to write the song and where your mindset is versus what my mindset is listening to the song and really trying to take in the lyrics – we can go in two completely different paths based on the specifics of what we went through in life and taking a look at the pandemic as well with live music being removed, with performing live and everything that comes with music really being removed from us. It can definitely see where all of a sudden like there's different like past troubles and past anxieties and past trauma, sadnesses that can come forward because that positivity of being with so many people that love music for the exact same reason. But when it comes down to the specifics of why they love it, it's always going to be different. Everyone goes through different things in life. But the meaning and the core emotion is basically where the consistency comes in, why you get so many people singing songs back to the artists, or when you guys are on stage, people singing songs back to you and really enjoying it. So I took a little bit of a different route on it, but it's a very similar core where I looked at the uh, words of Phantom Pain, the lyrics, and I thought that the meaning was about feeling pain, anxiety, sadness, and anger from past trauma. Similar where you're going with it, where now that live music was gone, some of these things had an avenue to come back. Because even though it might be in the past and you aren't going through something like that anymore, it still has pain and ramifications on your life. And those around you might not even realize that those pains are still happening because it was something that really you went through in life. And it's not going to always be, it's not going to always like be prevalent, but it's going to be there at some point. It's going to be able to stick with you. And you have to consistently try and fight this phantom pain, even though it's a, technically a phantom due to the fact that what you had gone through to experience that is no more. But it's still stuck in your head because you went through it and it's kind of a part of you at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's like, that's like exactly right. And I mean, that's exactly what I wanted people to take from it on like a general stance. Like, I, for me, it's like, people might not ever understand the parts of the songs that actually are about me or what I'm feeling or what I go through. Cause it's like, I, I want to write something that means something to me that's going to scare me or something that's important that I need to get out, but I want it to be relatable to anyone. So I find a way to word it where it's like, it means what I need it to mean, but it can mean whatever it needs to mean to other people. But I gotta give credit. That was pretty much the most spot on description of a song. 
I've ever heard from someone else. Pretty much exactly. But yeah, it's like, like you said, it's like people don't always see what you're dealing with. They don't know that something that you might not be dealing with anymore that happened 10 years ago or five years ago can still have the same impact on you when it's triggered. And I think like those are all elements of what the song is about. So like, I appreciate you like, you know, vibing with that. That's cool. Well, I think a big reason why I kind of vibe with it and you're welcome by the way, but I think one of the biggest reasons why I vibe with it is because there was a time back, let's, I mean, let's go back four years ago where I had just gotten out of college and it seemed like I had the world on my shoulders. Like, oh, this is great. I got a, I had a, a job and all of a sudden and a girlfriend, everything seemed good. Halfway through 2017, everything was horrible. Me and that girl, no, it, 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 we broke up and it was, it was just something that really took a toll on me. Job hated. It. I thought like, what is life? Is this supposed to be what life is supposed to be like where I'm supposed to wake up, go to work, come home, watch Netflix, fall asleep and do the same thing over and over again? Like, what is this? Is this even, like, this isn't for me. This isn't what I want. I thought this might be kind of like the safe way to go, but this isn't what I want. But then preach, really, preach. Yeah. <laughs> but then trying to no, like I figure totally out, agree. but trying to figure out like exactly what I wanted to do in life and try and figure out where I wanted to go with it and everything that was happening. There was a mass amount of depression, a mass, there was a couple of, there was some suicidal thoughts, suicidal tendencies, and some attempts even as well. I'm not afraid to say that because it is true. And I've gotten past that and music has been a big part of it. But where I relate with the song a little bit behind that is because there are times where all of a sudden, especially during the pandemic, like I didn't see a lot of people. I was kind of basically hunkered in here and was working my computer and doing a lot of stuff and at times you know i did get lonely every now and again and sometimes some of those feelings kind of got you know, started to creep back in again so it's like yeah i've been past that for three four years at this point but there are still times where those problems and those pains still kind of creep in and i got to find a way to you know get past them and basically work through them and make sure that phantom pain stays a phantom and is not pain just stays further and further away music is a huge thing for me on that and now that you know live music is back and i'm able to get back into a mosh pit i'm able to re if those things ever come up i'm able to release some of that and probably the most positive way i know so when it comes to relating everything back to it what you have gone through in your life might be completely different but where we we're, where we kind of like come together in that is where we each have some sort of like past experience that has caused us pain, has caused us a little bit of trauma, and at times does come back in once again. But it's not as prevalent because it was something that happened in the past, and we do have people around us, we do have supports around us, and especially for everyone listening, we have music that we can really closely get into that helps us get through this. I feel like this is like the first time I don't really have to explain the song because I feel like you kind of did it for me, so... <laughs> Like that was like that was pretty, yeah. Like I feel like you kind of, I'm, I'm starting. I'm like my this whole time I was kind of like, did I like write what the song was about and send it to this guy and just forget about it already? Because this is like exactly what <laughs> I was thinking when we wrote it. So that's just funny. Yeah, no, like that's all very true. I'm actually really glad that you vibed with it that way. Like, and I mean, obviously, I'm sorry to hear about the stuff that you went through, but like for me, it's like obviously writing music like that biggest payback is you know you want to write something that makes other people feel the way your favorite bands made you feel like when you were going through that shit and that song was the one thing that made you feel like okay about what you were dealing with like you know you want to be able to do that for other people in whatever way so like that's always my favorite part about this stuff you know it's like hearing people understand what i was trying to say and e even the way that i bury it underneath sometimes because a lot of every single song that Saving Vice has ever written has like the very clear like meaning. And then all of the stuff that we personally were feeling that we buried underneath the surface. And it's like if you go back to any of the lyrics enough times, you can start to like pick stuff out. Because like I've always loved that theatrical like cinematic feel to music where it's like there's all these layers and it's this huge it's this huge like creation with all of these parts and if you the more effort you put into each individual part the more it's all going to come together into something bigger and um, i think sometimes the stuff that gets overlooked in other music is that depth that lets it stay relevant to you even after you've kind of like maybe over listened to it but it's almost like the more you listen to it the more you understand it and the more you appreciate it rather than just trying to make something that like entertains people for a certain amount of time and then you rinse wash repeat like i don't know it's kind of like if you create something that has more of like a time period specific thing 
or if the pr- the style of music and I'm gonna use new metal as an example because we, like listen to a new metal track and things that they're talking about in there some of them still have more relevance to today but there's a lot of them that have that don't have that relevance just because of the fact that the genre was most prevalent in the very late 90s and early 2000s so there's always some sort of time frame message around there but the songs that really were created during that new metal genre that really stick out are the ones that have this longer flowing meaning and really have something of more substance that people can really latch on to i think lincoln park is a great example of that especially with songs like you know crawling in the end even going into the meteor album with songs like faint numb numb is a perfect example of that just because you really get down to the core mean of it and people connect with it so heavily because it is based more on emotion and people go through so many different things in life for able to base themselves off that emotion. And honestly, in today's world, I think rock and metal, metalcore specifically from what I've dove into in the past, I would say at this point, close to a little bit over two and a half years when I really got into it. It's something where I see more reality and more special meaning behind a lot of these songs that people really take a deep dive look into and songs that why you think certain songs people still listen to back from like when like back in the early days of metalcore, like think about the end of heartache by kill switch engage. People are still listening to that thing heavily. Go back to an album that came out eight years ago with Semper Paternal, hearing what Ali Sykes would have been going through to really talk about listen to sleepwalking. It's still as powerful today as it was back in 2013. So when you guys as artists are really writing something that's personal and has a lot of connectivity to uh, emotions that a lot of people feel, that's when you're going to write songs that people are going to remember certain things about and really connect to, and they're going to listen to more and more and realize certain things about, hell, when you brought up the whole entire thing of, you know, just remembering why music is also kind of the thing that helps get you past it, past that certain pain. Hell, when I was going through that horrible, horrible time in my life, the one biggest thing that helped me out was music. That's why I'm doing this stuff right here. That's why I'm on this. That's why I'm doing this podcast. That's why I'm doing everything with MSOD Rocks. That's why I'm doing everything because I love the music so much and I connect with it so well. And when I was listening to Phantom Pain, it kind of did take me back to this time back in 2017 where... Music, I was starting to lose music, honestly. It just wasn't my thing anymore just because kind of depression was taking over, especially my favorite band because I had so many different memories tied to my favorite band that were positive, but they were being overtaken by negative memories due to the fact that the girl I was dating really liked the band that I liked as well. So I decided one day, I said, I have to figure out a way to change this. And I decided to take back the band by just going to see him play live all by myself. I just said, screw it. It was one of the best concerts I've ever been to because right when that first note hit, that first riff hit, any premonition, any negativity just went straight out of my mind. And for the next hour and a half, yeah. I was me again. I think people forget, like, I think the longer you're, you're away from live music, the more you forget what it feels like. And I think that goes for performing as well. Like, it's like the longer I'm off stage, the more anxiety I get about doing it again, because it's like, I forget like what it feels like to be doing it. So I don't remember what I did to get over my anxiety when I was doing it. But, but then I always find that no matter how long I've gone, you kind of, it's like riding a bike, you just get back up and do it. And it just happens. Cause it's like you feed the energy is contagious. So it's like the crowd always feeds it. And then like, even if you go up there in a bad mood, the crowd is going to give you their mood, you know? No, absolutely. I mean, I've gone to shows where I've been in pretty bad moods, honestly, just because of things that have been going on in life or I just had a really long day. didn't want to go to a show, but I bought tickets for it. So I said, I don't want to lose out of my investment. I want to go see this show. Sometimes those shows end up being the best shows I've ever been to. And the bands that perform at those shows are bands that I continue to listen to to this day, even like the openers on top of it as well, just because there's just this positive energy where I could be completely drained, don't want to do anything, go to a show, I get pushed into a mosh pit, I feel that energy, and my mind just goes from like 1 to 11 at that moment. It's like, it's freaking go time, motherfuckers! And it's just, it, it's something that's absolutely incredible. And you listen to Phantom Pain as well, it's you get the feeling of the fact that you can overcome all of that because it's a phantom, it's like a ghost. Think of it out like with uh, it's like like Super Mario. Every time you look, see Boo chasing you, you turn around and you look at it in the face and it disappears. Yeah, it's because it's a phantom. It's not necessarily there. So when you face it and you kind of own it, that it goes away. And that's something that live music and music in general really helps out with because it brings back that positivity in you. So you can basically look at that past trauma right in the face and it disappears because it knows it doesn't have any power over you. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, it's like, 
it's like a it's like a positive and a negative because it's like the whole the lies could let me go thing is kind of like you know there's something that can be from the past that you're over and it's in the past you've grown from it changed it's like you got over it let go of it whatever it is but at the end of the day it's like it still happened and sometimes the only way to like move on from it is to just kind of forget that it happened you know what i mean so you don't have to keep living through it because it's it did happen so if you do live through it it's going to be painful so sometimes it's like you know the the truth is going to hurt no matter what and like sometimes the lies can kind of let you go from it and like you know sometimes i think people look at lying to themselves as being like always an inherently negative thing but i think a lot of people do it to shield themselves from trauma you know no, I absolutely have to agree with you on that. I do know a couple of people that do the exact same thing as well. And it's all based on not having to go through that trauma again, where for me, I take a little bit of a different approach to that where, I mean, I mentioned some of the stuff that happened to me and the reason and what some of that, uh, those negative thoughts and that depression had caused for me earlier on when I was explaining the meaning. But the reason I do that is because then I, I own it. It's a part of me. And I went through it. It's the reason why I talk about it is because if it wasn't for that, I might not be doing this right now. I not, might not be talking to you on this podcast and doing these podcasts is probably my favorite thing to do because I get to connect with so many different people and I get to talk about music with people that actually make music with a lot of substance behind it and could potentially help out as many people as possible through their music. And I know the power that there is behind it. So I want to make sure that as many people as possible can get behind it as well. And that's why I love doing these podcasts. But I always bring it up because if I wasn't, if I bring it up just because I, if it wasn't for me going through that, I wouldn't be here right now. Like I wouldn't be doing this right now. I might still be at that same job just thinking, you know, oh, you know, nine to five, you know, oh, live in the dream, but also being completely dead inside because I'm not actively pursuing what makes me happy. Oh, it's like, that's exactly what it is. It's like you, uh, you're going to you start to realize that you can have things fit that your like framework that you want, but if you're not doing the thing you actually want to do, you're not going to get anything out of it. No, oh, absolutely. It's like, again, with that, with that other job, I had like, I realized like, Oh yeah, I can go to, I can go to these cats. I can go do this, go do that. All of a sudden it's like, it's not, it's like, even though the money I was making, it wasn't worth dealing with the, just the depression that it was causing the anger that it was causing inside me. The fact that I wasn't happy because I necessarily, I wasn't necessarily doing what I wanted to do. I wasn't even doing anything I wanted to do. I was literally managing a customer and vendor database for a large company and I was getting bait and I had a team help me with it, but I was the only one doing any work. I'm like, why the fuck am I here? This is horrible. (laughs) So I got up and left. Yeah. It's like, I mean, if you're like, if you're not learn at least learning or learning something from it or getting something out of it that's going to build on what you do next it's like what's the point all i learned was that i want to do this not that yeah i hear that man more than anything and even like when i went through fans of pain as well diving a little bit deeper in the song looking at the instrumental build behind it it really portrayed this whole entire phantom pain style and like trauma coming back into your life from past traumas that you had just a come back as a remembering sort of thing and having to deal with that sort of pain and find a way to eradicate it for that moment. I like the way the instrumental build was worked around that because when it comes to listening to it, it really helps guide this whole entire story of emotion along. And I got to say, man, I, I, I mean, I went through the whole entire song. I got two pages of notes on here. I'm ready to go if you're ready to go <laughs> and dive deep no, into this go. bad boy. Let's go. Alrighty, so one thing that I listen like right as way when you guys open up the song, the intro has this like echoing electronic feel that I heard, and it kind of feels like you're stuck in a warehouse all alone at night. So you have this vast open space, a lot of echoing going behind. So it kind of feels like you know you're kind of stuck in your mind in a way, and you're this very little cog in this, and anything can happen. Because then when the vocals come in and go into the first verse, you get the lighter electronic piece that then comes in over the top of it to create somewhat of this haunting vibe. Similar, like something is lurking in the shadows coming for you. And I said, this was rather interesting because the electronic inclusions here make it seem like you haven't fully gotten past what you've dealt with, with past trauma. So that's where that phantom pain comes in. Cause it feels like there's something right behind you. That's ready to come and take you down. Yeah, man. That's like, that's like, yeah, I, I just, that's pretty spot on. I'm not going to lie. I mean, yeah, we were going for that. Obviously like the sound is a little different from what we've done in the past, but 
we kind of, I feel like built up our discography for fans to expect us to do different stuff and experiment and like, you know, try different things. But um, yeah, it was supposed to have, we wanted to have that like eerie human connection where you just hear like my voice and the words and you really get the words ingrained in your head before you even hear the chorus. So that way when the chorus hits, you can like, relate to it better i guess i don't know because it kind of drills it into you so but yeah it's like you kind of hit all the notes like we wanted to have that weird horror-esque vibe to it and you did really match on that as well And i think the biggest reason behind that was because the way the electronic inclusion was on top of that just because again you had this more mystic kind of style and then you also had a little bit more of this haunting kind of feel to it as you got in the verses which really did let us fully sink into the lyrics and really focus in on that when it comes to the lyrics and the vocals and everything and we went to face with things but when we get to the vocals and whatnot i do that in a separate section on this whole entire podcast whenever i go through a song as well because I, however i look at song is always i listen to the song fully through and i try and figure out the meaning then i try and figure out how the instrumentals drive the songs towards that meaning and towards the emotion of that meaning and then i go through the vocals and see how the vocals basically put the whole entire guided path finishing touches and really amplify everything the instrumentals are doing because the instrumentals are such a big base behind it as well. And they add so much emotion behind it. They add this, they add that background to it. And in this case, the electronic inclusion really helped understand that there's something going on in your head. There's some sort of trauma that is still there from what you went through in the past. It's never going to be gone because you went through and it might always come and affect you. But you have to realize at times, you know, you never know. It could come up and get you, but you have to be prepared for that moment and understand that it's over. Like you went through that and you beat it. Even though it keeps trying to come back, you understand how you can beat it. You've beaten it before. You can beat it again. It kind of has this feeling of it's going to come for you, but you can still beat it. I mean, I like, I, I think it's really cool that you, you like pull apart all the stitches when you listen to music and actually like dig into it like that. I mean, I haven't experienced that a lot and uh it's kind of it's weird it's like one of those weird interviews where i feel like you're kind of like it decapitating the song and pulling it apart for me and like you kind of see all the parts to it and what it meant and like uh yeah i mean you're exactly right that was pretty much all you hit the nail on the head i say you should see when i have to do album reviews man it's like and i try and do like <laughs> pull al apart because i'll do this all in like one day you need and... 10 seasons you need like 10 seasons <laughs> Yeah, like, I'll put it this way. Like I, when I reviewed uh, Bear Two's new album, I was on vacation up north just to run through the whole entire thing, get my thoughts down on the album. It took me two whole days oh my of God. listening to it and just diving deep into it. Like I was fishing and whatnot. And here I've got the album playing in, in my earbuds before it even comes out. I'm just like, okay, let's listen to this thing. Let's hear it go on. Let's figure out this part. And it was like, it just, it, I, I don't know. It's like, I just like to do it that way because I pull out certain things and I find certain things in songs where even if it's a song where all of a sudden it's like, I listen to it first. I'm like, this makes no freaking sense. Why would they put this in there? Then I dive deep and try and understand it and kind of like basically pull it apart, like pulled pork. It's like, okay, I found the piece that I'm looking for and why all of a sudden I figure out a certain aspect of the song and why this little crazy part was put in there. And it just makes the rest of everything make sense. And it makes me see that song for how good it actually is. It's like, Dude, that's, Oh, this makes that's no fucking sense. awesome. Like, that's awesome. I don't think enough people do that. Like, I think, I spent a lot of time trying to like music that I initially didn't like because I wanted to understand what people saw in it. And there's been a lot of music where I hated it and I grew to like it because I really tried to. And there's definitely been a lot of music that no matter how hard I try to listen to it, I just can't like it. But putting the effort in, I think, is really important as like a listener. And I think I respect that a lot. That's pretty cool. Thank you. And like, cause I'll give an example. Like there's one that I couldn't really get into from last year, which was asking Alexandria's album from 2020. I just couldn't get into the sound at all. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't seem like anything for, for me, but the one well, thing too much, I took, too much Imagine Dragons for my taste. The one thing I took solace in it was like, I took a look at some of the interviews from the guys and they were talking about how the music that they made back in, you know, 2009, 2010, that people really associate heavily with them. Even some of the stuff off their self-titled album, they just don't associate with that anymore just because of where they are in life. A lot of them, a lot of those guys are married. They have kids. So their mindset on life and their mindset when it comes to music is a little bit different than it was. So that's why you're getting what you have. Like, okay, now, you know, is even though I'm not that big into it, now a lot of these songs are starting to make more sense with the stylistic way that they are. 
So yeah. it's not somewhere like, you know, it's not going to necessarily be for me, but I understand the choices and I understand the reason why they took these, uh, these certain routes. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's like, no matter how I feel about someone or something, it's like always good to see bands that started in the genre I'm in thriving. Like I want to mm-hmm. believe that that's a future that anyone trying to do this can accomplish if they're good enough and their hearts in the right place. And like, like I, you know, I, however I may feel about how a band goes with their sound or their image or whatever, like it, my only hope is bands like that who do end up making it and getting to be a career musician and getting to just play shows and make music for a living and do that stuff. You know, it's like, that's the dream. So it's like, if you don't see bands doing that, it's like, what hope do you have? So I think it's important to try to like celebrate people's success, regardless of how you may have bias against it, you know, or be jealous or envious, you know, because I feel like envy is obviously one of the biggest plagues in the music industry altogether. Absolutely. It is. Because even like, I'll bring up the Asking Alexander thing as well. Even like when I reviewed the album, I said, do I like the album? No, it's definitely not for me. But this is the music the guys want to make. And I would much rather have these guys making the music they want to make and stay a band than make one more album that we all want and then just completely not want to make music anymore. I'd rather have them continually making music because it is much better for music if bands that have been successful keep making music because... Heck, that just that just means that we have more musicians out. That means that we get more quality music out there. And even if we don't like it anymore, there's people that probably still do like it. So yeah, no, exactly, man. What? It's like people. I, I every time I see someone say something like, "Oh, it's like they should just break up." It's like, bro, if like, like you don't like their music anymore, like they shouldn't have to end. You just don't have to listen to them anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like it, it makes you realize how much people don't look at musicians, like actual people. Like, it's like, this is what they do. This is what they love doing. And like, they might do it for you. They might do it for themselves. But like, if it's not for you, it's like being like, Oh, fuck them. Like, it's like, it's still for someone. It just might not be for you anymore. And like, I don't understand why people can't just walk away from it rather than like attack it exactly because could you imagine if it was like a different way around where all of a sudden people are looking at you and like say it was like i mean this could go to anyone anyone out there what if someone was looking at a relationship that you were in and said oh i don't like like what job you have anymore or i don't like where you're living you guys should break up even though it's like it doesn't people that might still be rooting for you and then you guys might still want to be together but just because someone's like oh no it's just not for me man why Why would you wouldn't do that to somebody you wouldn't do that to somebody's relationship why would you do that to a band just because they're not making the sound that you want them to make anymore yeah yeah there are bands that are out there right now that you know i like their older stuff i don't like their newer stuff that is entirely okay if i don't like their newer stuff there are plenty of albums that i can go to from their past discography that i can check out that i can still live with or how about this i can find new bands to like that are in the style and make the same kind of sound that i'm looking for I mean, hell, in tw- since I started doing the podcast, I started doing interviews, you want to know how many bands I've found that I absolutely love listening to now? A- at least 200. At least 200. It-, it just doesn't stop anymore. And I keep going and going because I'm realizing that there are so many great bands out there. They're making so, many, so much different kind of music that I can easily get into that I really like. And I can tell people about and I can... Say to my friend who likes a lot more indie rock and all sort of rock, hey, check out this, check out this. Tell my friends who love heavy metal and metalcore, hey, check out this, check out that. I can tell my boss's boss my full-time job who loves the same stuff I do, hey, check out this band. I think you're really going to like them. And then she's like, holy crap, I actually really like what you sent me. Thank you. I'm like, I'll just keep it coming. Because, yeah, there are bands that are on top world right now. They can change their sound. It's up to them. But if you don't like it, you can do what I th- they always say you can do two, one of two options. One, you can look at their past discography and hang out of that, or you can find other bands to listen to as well. There's always a, there's plenty of other bands out there for you to listen to. Yeah. Or there's, there's, are, there's always a hundred bands who are trying to sound like old ass Alexandria. So you can just go listen to them. That's also true. Or any other band that's like, you know, with like all the bring me the horizon, like death core fans, like from their count, their blessing albums. Yeah. There's a lot of bands out there trying to make that sound as well. Bring Me the Rise isn't trying to make it anymore, but there are other bands that you can check out and I want to. They don't want to make that sound anymore. So you can yeah, either hang so, out of well, that album or you can find other so, bands that are doing the same thing. Sometimes you have nothing to yell about and sometimes you do. Or some, Yeah, sometimes you have nothing to yell about and you're like, I just want to yell about something. Yeah. 
I've seen that happen. Well, jumping back into Phantom Pain as well, because I want to keep going in on that. So we talk about like just the intro and the first rip. When we get to the chorus, what I heard from it was you get we get much more of this like very melodic metalcore approach with those electronics over the top to keep up that Phantom vibe to the entire song. It was an interesting move. I'm not going to lie. But it would not be as effective unless we get something heavier behind to prove more of this contrast to the entire song. So I'm like, okay, I like where the chorus is going, but in order to really make that first verse stand out in this chorus stand out, I'm looking for something to really just contrast against it and really take that fancy pain and really make it feel like, you know, that pain is here and you have to face it. And in the second verse, it's exactly what happened because we do get the electronic overlay and it provides that phantom feel to start out with. But the drums begin to pick up throughout the rest of the song and the guitars keep up this more heavy approach, takes more of this metalcore approach to the song. But always keeping it below a certain pace to make that phantom feel still feel like it's had. It is a slick move that I need to make this song really work out in contrast from what the, fir- what the first verse was showing because now you're actually in like that phantom pain. It doesn't feel like it's real, but it's here at the same time as well. So again, just the contrasting of verses really made that chorus stand out for what it is. No, I mean, like, it's always hard with us because we want to have, like, we want to have, it's, it's like hard, when you have the two vocalist thing, there's, like, a certain line you can't cross, where if you go too far in one direction, one vocalist becomes, like, redundant, so it's, like, we wanted to make sure that we kept that balance going, and in the past, like Chase's screams, he always wrote his stuff with like this rappy sort of spoken word rhythm to it. They always had this like choppy kind of, because that's like the stuff he listens to. And then, you know, we'd have songs that were predominantly like cleaner with me singing and Chase would be less present because he was like doing all the heavy stuff or most of it, you know? And then it got to a point where it was like, yo, it's like, why don't you just try taking that stuff you've already been doing, but like try some different tones and try speaking and rap, like rapping it instead of screaming it. And that was kind of where Phantom Pain started. Cause like, obviously we all love Lincoln Park and like stuff like that. And like, we like hip hop influences, but we didn't want to like go trying to shove it into our music where it didn't make sense. So this was a really fun, like Robbie sent us the instrumental and he had kind of had the beat and everything already. And we were just like, yeah, it's really sick. Like, that'd be fun to experiment with. And, you know, we wrote it in the studio in like a day, like July of last year, you know, we wrote a pre-pro demo for it, put it all together. And then we sent it to like the band chat. We're like, this is the new song. And then we ended up, you know, waiting until shows were going to come back. And then we went and re-recorded it with Randy who did like hello there and cold in the dark. Um, Randy does drums and sings for if I were you, if you didn't know that, but, um, Randy Pasparella, full name. But yeah, so it was like, it was it was cool. It was like a, definitely like a risky, but I felt like a song that people were going to like vibe with. I feel like it might hit a new audience that maybe hasn't listened to us before. And I feel like a lot of people who don't like heavier music have told us that we've been like a gateway band for them to get into heavier music. So I was hoping that maybe this would be something for our fans we already had and like newer fans who might not have heard us. So we were talking about being like a gateway band for newer fans to get into not only your music, but getting into heavier music as well. I can easily see that happening with this song and easily see what you mean by that. Because even when it came down to me getting into heavier music, because I'm not going to lie, when I was just starting this out, like I really didn't want to listen to anything that had unclean screams. It just was not my thing, not my vibe. The only really thing I liked that was at that time was I listened to the Architects Holy Hell album and I started to get like opened up to it, but I never really fully embraced it. But I really liked the album. But it wasn't until I heard Motionless and White for the first time, which was like my full on like oh, yes. gateway. Dude, I fucking love into- Motionless and White. Like they're so good. It literally, that was my gateway into heavy music. So I'm like, okay, let's take a listen to this. And of course, this was before Disguise came out. So Graveyard Ship was their most recent album. All right, let's listen to the top song on Spotify at this point. And it was Voices. And I'm like, this is not what I was expecting because there was no unclean screams there. I'm like, but this is really kind of has this like mystic, gothy vibe to it. And I'm really enjoying it. But I wanted to see something more from them. So I went to the next song. And it became one of my top 10 favorite songs of all time with Eternally Yours. And that was the thing that basically said, holy shit, I am That's a great this. song. It's a great song. 
So like listening to what you guys brought in with Phantom Pain as well, I could easily see that being some of that like that transitional moment, similar to kind of in a you know in a way that like Voices was for myself as well. Because even going back to the instrumentals as well, when you got to the bridge of the song, you got this more focused drum fill intro that then goes into a much faster piece from the drums and the guitars as well. And honestly, I really did like the move for the faster pacing in this bridge because it feels like that Phantom Pain is coming right for you and it's not stopping. And the feeling like it's not stopping is a good move because you're going to be going through trauma because it is never fully gone. So it's always going to be something that tries to come back. It's going to be always something that tries to come back. But then the chorus also can then after that, in contrast, provides a feeling of that you can beat it down still. So it's something that might always come back that's never going to leave, but you still always have the ability to basically say, yeah, you're not going to affect me today. <laughs> Stiff arm. Yep, stiff arm it is. But I go through the instrumentals as well, but I mean, I know you brought up the vocals at points, but now it's time for me to kind of go through the vocals as well and really see what I have to say about that. Ha, 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 ha. Because now we'll start with the first verse because your vocals end up playing with more of that lighter, cleaner style that is a little bit distorted overall to playing that electronic overlay that is on the song a little bit better. And again, I like the move because it provides more of that mystic and creepier vibe to the overall song. Like the pain is still creeping around that that electronic uh, more focus intro and then first verse is really providing so your vocals end up amplifying the feeling of that mysticism and that creepiness that that phantom pain is still coming yeah like that droning like the drone uh, we kind of um some of the inspiration from it was sort of like in the dark night when batman the, the score for that movie was really good and the part where batman's like interrogating the joker there's this like sound that's almost like a beehive or like nail it's like a weird droning nails on the chalkboard thing and that's kind of like the uncomfortable droning backtrack we kind of used throughout the chorus and the verses and uh it kind of carries through the whole song and like that was kind of the mood we wanted okay i did not even pick up on that but my god i'm thinking about that scene as well because I think kind of like that droning beehive feel. It might have also been prevalent with, uh, I mean, the fact when they're in that interrogation room, you've got the fluorescent lights on. And whenever you hear the fluorescent lights, you always have that kind of like buzzing humming in the back. So it kind of adds to it where, I mean, think about it. For us, right, you're in an interrogation. You're, it's like you're face to face with something that you're trying to d basically beat or you're trying it's, to it's get like, information it's out static. of. It's static. It's a static. Yes. Yeah, and it just added to that overall like mystic distortion creepiness overall, and I can easily see where you're going with that, and I absolutely am 100% in for that move. Thank you, man. Then we jump into the chorus, and we see you going with a very similar clean style that you did in the in the first verse, but what you, I kind of picked out what you did was, you take out the whole distortion piece of it to give more of a realistic feel to the song. So a little bit of like distortion was on your vocals in the first verse, but now on the chorus, it's it's more removed. And this gives us more of a connection to the song that we can also deal with these problems in the end. It just isn't isolated to people we see on social media. It isn't isolated to people we see on TV. It is something that we all end up dealing with, with going through these past traumas that always that end up reoccurring and repopping up once again. It honestly gives more of this human connective approach to the song. So when it comes time for you guys to finally play this song live, I think it's something where a lot of people can really get into with more of that connective approach just due to the fact that those cleaner, more undistorted vocals in the chorus give a lot more of this human feel to the song. I mean, it's going to definitely make for like more of a party chanting vibe live but it also is good because like that song's like one of the hardest songs i've written to sing live so like if the crowd's singing it back it'll make my job easier i'll pull a jeremy mckinnon you know give him the mic you know if i'm having a rough day oh abs absolutely <laughs> it just i mean it, it, if you're on if you're feeling on that day and it's like if your emotional state is really powerful enough to really pull that out at that moment absolutely you can do it but if you need to pull out the whole entire jeremy can give someone the mic is kind of stick it out there. yeah totally go for it because people especially with the way your vocals are set up with more of that melodic metal core backing it does have a little bit of an easier time for people to really chant back to you so i can easily see where you're coming from with that well yeah i mean like when I, for me it was like if the most memorable moments i had at shows i went to was like fought my way to the front row and I got to sing in the mic. And like, that was like the highlight of my life when I was like a fan going to shows like that was like, I got like acknowledged for being that big of a fan and I got to like sing the words I love. Like, so when I get to do that for someone else who really loves my music like that, I feel like it's like what I've always wanted to do. So that's like, I, I love giving people that chance to feel that 
buzz because not everybody gets to feel the adrenaline that you feel when you perform live but it's like unlike anything you'll ever do it's it getting to share a piece of that because that's what it felt that was what made me want to perform so bad was like i got that taste of it and i was like oh my it was like i never felt that alive you know nothing else makes me feel as good as performing shows does you know Absolutely. What really stuck out my head when you were describing that was not only the humility to understand the power that live shows have had on you and also the power that live shows have on other people, but the awareness that how you felt when you were in the crowd and your favorite bands were basically kind of handed you the mic in a way for you to sing along with the words that you've absolutely fallen in love with for those bands, that you're able to be on the other side of that and continue to do that and give people something that they're never going to forget for the rest of their lives. It's that kind of awareness that's going to end up making your band a lot more, what's the proper word, a lot more connectable with everybody's mindset and then the fans mindset as well, because there's going to be more of this like connective family feeling right there where you're a part of something where it's not just like band up here, fans down here. It's going to feel more like band fans, same play, same like level playing field. And everyone has more of this connectivity to it where honestly, they feel like they're kind of a part of it because when they're in the crowd, they're able to provide some of that energy for you guys to go up on stage and you guys are providing them energy back. So all of a sudden it's this massive energy feeding frenzy that makes these shows just incredibly powerful. So by the time, you know, you get to that final song, if it's going to be something that's absolutely heavy with metalcore, especially for people like me who just jump into the pit like crazy, we get a crazy wall of death going. All of a sudden you get, you know, the full on smashing of people looking like it's a, like a, like a, uh, pre uh, industrial age army just going at each other and just or like bronze age stone age army just wall to wall just poof. you get that feeling that impact and honestly for all of us in the pit we all love it at that point if if there if you're able to pull that off and just have that energy flow and we're able to do that from uh someone's perspective that likes to go in the mosh pits instead oh man you as a show you won trust me you won at that point for sure uh, i don't disagree with that and then jumping back in the vocals, because yes, we also have Chase as another vocal as well. And he was in the second verse of this to come in and provide us with some of those unclean vocals and even rougher clean vocals compared to yourself as well. It gives us somewhat more of a darker and more mystic feel, somewhat comparable in a way on this song that I thought to I prevail with their difference between sometimes with their clean and unclean vocals as well. But there isn't much intense energy here it has more of this like drawn back feel overall but it absolutely needs it to match up so well with the song overall so this is the way to go to prevent this song from going sailor going kind of off the rails where it has that heavier intense style to it but because it is a little bit more of a drawn drawn back on the energy it really still focuses in on the whole entire song meaning at the same time as well so we're getting a much more connectiveness to the song and we're not like and with chase's vocals they do stand out but they're not you know overshadowing everything else that's happening it's a great blend that's yeah, happening in that second they're verse. definitely following the beat a lot no oh, absolutely and then even when you get to the bridge and the breakdown you take the unclean vocals from i cover from both of you guys i watched the video and you put them center stage and i really like this move once again because you're bringing the heavier emotions that you're going to have to deal with once you deal with those past traumas coming back once again from time to time just bringing that up in the bridge breakdown, you guys play on that incredibly well. So I was all oh, the, for bringing that up. The little up chug, the little like slowly sinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite parts. I actually, so Chase, Chase wrote all of his parts he did, obviously, but the only part of like the rap verse, we're calling it, that I wrote was the. So take a second, let me breathe. This is a pit that's growing deeper, colder than dark. And then the bottles of night I'm drinking, this ship is slowly sinking. Like that was all, cause that was kind of like me. I was like, bro, like all I did over the pandemic was just get hammered every day. And I'm like still getting hammered every day because of the pandemic. And it's like, that was kind of like what it felt like without music. And then, you know, the colder than dark thing in the rap part was like, I wanted to have some rap writing credit cause it was something different we never done, but we were like dropping like the references to our old music, like, you know, the monsters in my closet from hollow bastion and then we did like the past the champagne reference with like we we recorded like the cork pop that was like a throwback to a uh, nerve damage and then the colder than dark which is like our first ep that was really what got our name out there but that little like play on the words with that i thought that was fun because like we just love connecting all our music like it has its own lore so it's like i like to think that 
anything you've ever seen in Saving Vice might come back around someday. You know, you might see the twins from Hello There in another video one day. You know what I mean? It's like we want to keep it like everything matters to us. We're never going to be that band that's like, oh, yeah, we hate that EP. We don't play it anymore. We don't talk about it. Like that EP meant something to us and it always will. And it will always mean something to Saving Vice and our sound. So it's like, we don't ever want to be that band where people have to go to shows being like, oh, one day they're just going to stop playing the songs I love the most. Like, we'll always go back through the vault and dig them out because, like, it made us who we are. And we know that for the fans because we were fans, you know? All right. I'm absolutely a big fan of that mindset as well because I know there are a good amount of bands where it's, they sometimes just completely don't care about some of the older stuff they've done or maybe there was like a ep or an album that they just kind of look at where it's like oh i we just don't connect anymore yeah there's going to be al- it's like you don't want to play everything off you don't want to play mo- much off it but maybe if like all of a sudden you play one song off it, it's just kind of like a fun thing because when you were writing it maybe it meant something to you that you just don't associate with anymore but at the time you associate with it a little bit I'll use Sleeping With Sirens as an example for the Gossip album. I know how they dislike that album, especially Kellen Quinn, because of the different people that had their hands on different producers, different songwriters as well. Just a lot of people in the mix that weren't just the band themselves. But I'm like, you look at the words, you look at the lyrics, there's going to be something that that had to mean something to you where you could go back to and play maybe once or twice every now and again, even though you're going to end up focusing in on something more prevalent from like, let's cheers to this. And then maybe something off of uh, their third, their third album, maybe some off of, God, I'm trying to even think some of these other albums. I completely am losing my mind on some of these names, but kind of, that's kind of the example that I'm bringing up with it. However, with you guys focusing in on, you know, we're never going to just focus in on not playing an album or not playing an EP because at the time when you wrote it, you were feeling something. It meant something to you and people still listen to it and it means something to them. And it, well, there you go. You get it. <laughs> Like yeah, and- you get it. That, that that's that's literally it. It's like it doesn't like to disregard the entire fan base that started you off where you are. It, it just be, like yeah, I get like being over music or growing past it, but it's like it meant something to you. Like you wrote it for a reason, and whatever it was, it's just it's like it's something that you kind of share with your fans and yeah, you should be able to do whatever you want as an artist and create what you want to create. But at the same time, if you're trying to be a career musician, like it's, why wouldn't you throw a bone to like the fans who are there from the beginning who want to hear that one song, you know what I mean? Who will go and pay to see any show you play and listen to all the new shit they hate just to hear that one song they love. You know, it's like, why wouldn't you play them that song? Yeah, yeah, or just it's or just like all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, play some up like your second album ever, even if you're 10, 11 albums deep, even you might not play really anything off the second album, play one thing every now and again. And next thing you know, people are gonna come be like, Oh my god, or play some off your initial album if you don't even like really associate with that kind of sound anymore. Just give it a shot. Why not? And even some of the people that like all your newer stuff, they might look at some of your older stuff and be and potentially be like, Oh man, this is actually kind of cool. I kinda want to check out some of this older stuff. Anything could happen in that realm. But the thing that really stuck out to me when we were talking about that was there is a sort of like self-awareness that you guys have as a band to where you guys have the mindset of a band, but you also really take into account the mindset of fans because not only were you guys just once fans of music and we're hoping to be able to be up on stage and giving people the exact same kind of feel as a member of a band or as an artist, but you understand that there are people still out there that were like you guys were maybe 10 years ago, wanting to always be in the front row, really connected with every single bit of the music. And that's something that I never want to see you guys ever forget just because that connectiveness, that awareness will make you connect with so many more fans as you guys continue to grow as a band to the point where people come out to your shows. You can get people coming out to 20, 30 shows a year just because of how much they really connect with the band And they also never know what songs are going to end up getting up here live, whether it's off of what you guys first ever wrote, maybe off of an offshoot EP, some of the classics that you guys will play, whatever it might be. Well, it should be like a mixed bag. You know, it's like you want to, I'd like for someone to be able to come see us in Massachusetts. You know, if we played Massachusetts two or three times in the same year, I'd want those people to go and get to see a different show every time, you know? Oh, absolutely. And you don't want you don't want people to just see like the same stuff over again. Of course, as bands, as you guys would grow larger as a band and you guys end up touring more across the United States, potentially even across the world as well. 
you're going to end up getting to a point where it's like, okay, are we going to be able to make like all these different shows at the same point as well? We have a lot, we got a different like budget maybe that when it comes to live performance, but just having the idea in mind where all of a sudden you can switch up a lot of different songs in that performance to really give people a unique taste and unique show no matter what, because hell, if you guys are playing a show, like let's just say you guys are playing a show in like Milwaukee, Wisconsin one day where I'm from. And all of a sudden, like two days later, you guys are playing a show in Chicago and I want to go to both shows because I want to see what happens. If I get a different show between both of those, that's going to be something that sticks in my head. I'm like, I saw this band twice in the span of like two, three days. And what I saw was completely different. It could be, you know, stage forms. It could be music as well. You guys just play a bunch of different stuff, but just that awareness, just that mindset is something that is absolutely insane and can really make you guys a band to for people like whenever you come by to see at least two or three times. Yeah, I think it'll keep us from getting bored too. That's not a bad way to put it either. Prevent you guys from getting bored. And when it comes to a Phantom Pain, I always like to kind of like come up with these songs and like wrap them up in a nice little overall summary. So I wrote overall Save Vice created this more mystic metalcore track on this one by keeping the stalking electronics and the instrumentals in order to let that more melodic metalcore style really set the mood. It could have gotten stale, but the difference in vocals between Tyler and Chase gives us a feeling like the pain is still lurking, the shadows waiting to strike, and then the time when it does strike ends up coming. They hit on the emotions of the topic rather well and the frustrations that come with dealing with it again and again. So if you guys haven't listened to this song, I suggest you listen to it and then you listen to it again and again and again and again and again and again. And I almost lost my headphones on that one going again and again and again and again and again. I love that, man. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. And now, you know, of course, live shows are coming back as well, or they're back as well. Do you guys have any plans to go out on the road, play live anytime, you know, in the next, like, before 2022 hits? I mean, we have the headliner we're playing in New Hampshire. We're headlining the, basically, it's like this Northeastern Festival of Independent Bands that basically, like, the talent from all of Maine, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. It's the New Hampshire Booking Fest. It is a two-day festival. There's two stages, 20 bands a day. Um, the second day is headlined by Kawanashi. It's all like hardcore beatdown, deathcore bands. The first date we're headlining is all like metalcore, post-hardcore, you know, stuff like that. But um, that'll be our first show back. So that's August 7th. That's going to be like historical for... It's like we're playing with so many of our friends that we've been playing with since we started playing shows years ago. And then um, we're obviously... Um, if you do follow us, we, uh, we're playing Broken Land Festival in Brooklyn, which I believe is October 23rd, with like Body Snatcher, Varsity, Left to Suffer, Boundaries, um, Dropout Kings, you know, a bunch of other bands still to be announced. So that's all I have right now. There are other plans. I just can't talk about it yet. Fair enough. And now you guys, you're making me kind of want to find my way out to that New York show because... See, being able to see you guys and then also being able to see one another, another great band I've had in the podcast. And you mentioned Varsity. I'm just like, God, dude, my bank, Joey, my bank Joey is one of my, me. Joey is a homie, 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 homie. <laughs> Joey is the best. Like, I love that kid like so much. He, uh, and if you do come to that show, you'll probably get to see us sing a song together. Oh man, now you're making it even harder to say no to this. I'm like, I'm gonna have to look at my bank. I'll be like, can I make this freaking happen? You should, just you should Milwaukee. Awesome. You should Milwaukee your way to New York. <laughs> um, that so, might take me like five or six days to Milwaukee, <laughs> New York. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got yeah, okay, that's not enough time. But hey, no, there might be. That's why you should do the math. It's not till the end of October. You could maybe do it if you start tomorrow. If I start tomorrow, if I start tomorrow, I'm going to miss out on a couple other things I have to do, like a bunch of other concerts, uh, Blue Ridge <laughs> Rock Fest, uh, friends' weddings that I have to be at. So hey, we'll see. Long, hey, have fun at Blue Ridge. That looks like a lot of fun. It will. And I've also got a, uh, I've also got a, I know Joey's actually going to be there as well. So I'm going to, I have to, I, I have to pay up on a debt that, that I promised him. And also I want to see a live show with that kid as well, because that guy is freaking awesome. He's great. We played with him before. He's very good live. He's very much the real deal. And I'm just, I'm just waiting to see, like, you know, continually seeing every single band I've had in the podcast. I'm always following along with every single one of them, especially after the podcast. It's like, okay, you know, I might not be necessarily following on all their socials at that given point, but I make sure after the podcast, I'm putting everything together. It's like, 
okay, I need to make sure that everyone gets in the know of this band. So I got to fa- find them on Facebook, got to find them on Twitter, got to find them on Instagram, got to find their website, got to find them on YouTube, got to find where you can get their merch, got to find where you can stream their music so I can make sure everyone gets in. Like, okay, now here's the perfect time to make sure that I'm liking all their stuff, subscribing to all their stuff. So that when everything uh, comes you- in, I can continue to see it. But not only that, but I can continue to see the growth of the band as they continue on. Hey, you get it. You understand the hustle, so you should keep spreading the word. And by the way, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it a lot. Oh, I, I'm more than happy to have you on, man. This was absolutely awesome, really going through Fans of Pain, helping everyone understand the song and not only that, but then letting them get into the song as well and let them kind of really take note of what they listen to and really get into it. So make sure you guys listen to Phantom Pain. But Tyler, as we close out this podcast, one thing I'd like to do is let you have the chance to say anything you want to say, plug what you want to plug at the end of the podcast. So even though you kind of already did that, I'll give you one more chance. So Tyler, the floor is yours. Hey, I mean, you know, just um, keep jamming us. I mean, you stream our music, you share it, you comment on it. Like, you know, that all goes farther than you know, especially for the music industry. So hey, like, go check out our website, check out our merch. We designed it all ourselves. You know, it all goes back to uh, making more music and making more merch. I mean, you know, spread the word. Come see us when we come to your town. You might just fall in love with us. Maybe. We don't know. Ooh, that so, is a thank good, you, man. That is a good way to put it. Now it's time for me to end this podcast on three, three very separate things. Yes, just not three or 33, just three. So the first is, as I had mentioned, I always want to follow along with these bands. I always want to make sure I'm following along with them. And I want to make sure you guys are as well. So when it comes to find them on all their social media accounts, subscribe to their YouTube channel, find their website, being able to pick up some of their merch and streaming their music to make sure that you guys know everything about this band, listen to them, share their music with everybody else. And also when they play live in your area, you guys know about it. I'm making it as easy as possible on you. Look at this, this uh, description of the podcast. Link below for the YouTube video. Yeah, you know all that. Like links in the description below, you'll see Find Saving Vice online. Everything will be there with labels and links for you guys to go like their stuff, subscribe their stuff, share their stuff, follow, listen, whatever it might be. And just keep sharing it, man. Just keep sharing it. Now, Tyler, here's number two. And it's something I alluded to when I met, said I owe a debt to Mr. Joey Varea from Varsity. And it's because on the podcast, if I enjoy having an artist or a band on the podcast, I always like to make a certain promise. So this has happened a hundred percent of the time. You have not broken that streak yet. So the promise is this. It is not an if it is not an if it is a, when I get to see you play live for the first time, the first round is on me. All right, dude, let's go. And I've been able to start paying up on that debt right now. And I keep planning to pay it up and I keep planning on growing that list as well. So hey. first rounds on me when I get to see you play live for the first hey. time. I, I drink Jamison before every set. So you find me and I'm there, buddy. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's go. All righty. So Tyler, on that note, I will not end this podcast with goodbye because I want to see you play live. I made that promise. We will take a shot, Jamison, before you go play live. And then I'll be in the pit going nuts as well. So if you see me, like you see some guy fall down horribly with his head start bleeding and still like happy as all hell, that'll be me. Don't worry about thanks for, that. Thanks. Thanks for coming. And I can't end this podcast goodbye. I got to make a that promise. I want to end the podcast again in the future and I want to see you play live. So I can't end with a goodbye. I got to end it with. See you later. See you later, homie. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on, man. Whoa, folks, I'm here with Tyler from the band Saving Vice. They're out of Vermont. If you guys like Metal Gore, go check them out. Metal Core, not Metal Gore. Metal Core, my bad, guys. If you want to make sure you're following them on all their social media platforms, make sure you're up to date with everything that's going on with them, streaming their music, sharing their music, buy some merch. Take a look at the description of this podcast, YouTube, Spotify, Podcast, iHeartRadio. I will have something that says Find Saving Vice there and you'll find all the links for everything so make sure you go check that out do the same thing with msot rocks facebook twitter instagram subscribe to the youtube channel if you want the core progression podcast videos make sure you subscribe there if you want the audio version you can subscribe on the spotify apple podcast and iHeartRadio. radio i want to thank you guys for listening and watching this episode once again tyler thank you for being on thank you to our sponsor phoenix fitness again 15 percent off your entire order 15 at using code msotd at checkout links for everything in the description below so you guys have no no excuse not to get into this stuff but for now, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Chord Progression Podcast brought to you by MSOTD Rocks or Rock and Metal Thrive. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of these episodes with a big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all!